We are continuing on with exponential equations. We've talked about two different ways that we can solve them. The first one is the equivalence property, where it says if we can make the bases match, then that should be our first choice, and then we can drop the bases and solve the equation where our exponents are equal to each other. But we saw an example last time where we could not make our bases match. So we had five to the x is equal to 38, and that was just impossible. So we solved this one by two different methods. We could either solve it by rewriting it in the logarithmic form, or we can solve it by taking log of both sides and then applying the logarithmic property. So let's see a different variation of how to solve exponential equations. So I see this one here. 3 to the 5x minus 6 is equal to 2 to the 4x plus 1. Now, this is very obvious that we will not be able to make our bases match because 3 and 2 are prime with no factors in common. So we're going to have to solve this one by using logarithms. Now, we can think about it the same two ways that we thought about our last one. So we can either convert this to logarithmic form. It might look a little bit confusing because I have exponents on both sides, but it's still possible. So again, the conversion formula is b to the y is equal to x can be converted to log base b of x is equal to y. So I can treat this as a base, this as an exponent, and this as an argument. So again, this would go this as the base, this is the exponent, and this is the argument, if you choose to think about it that way. Or I could flip-flop it. I could choose this as the base, this as the exponent, and then all of this as an argument. And so you could really rewrite this in logarithmic form using two different ways. So that's the first way that we could go about this. The second way that we could go about this is just taking log of both sides. So that's what I'm going to do here. I have log of 3 to the 5x minus 6 is equivalent to log of 2 to the 4x plus 1. And now I can use the power property on both sides. So I can take this power and I can bring it down front. And I can take this power and I can bring it down front. So that gives me 5x minus 6 times log of 3 is equal to 4x plus 1 times log of 2. And so what I would want to do now then is I need to distribute this log here on both sides because it is log times both of these. And then I can isolate my x's and whatnot. So this gives me 5x times log of 3 minus 6 log of 3 is equal to 4x times log of 2 plus 1 times log of 2. So it might look very crazy right now, but this is in fact a linear equation. Because if I look at each one of these logs, they are log base 10 of an actual number. So these here are all constants. They're all actual numbers. You can type them in your calculator and you can figure out the decimal for them. So just treat them as actual numbers. And then the way that we're going to solve this linear equation is we're going to put our variables on the same side. So I'm going to move my 4x over here. And then my constants on the same side. So I'm going to move all of those on the right. So on the left, I have 4x log 3. I have 5x log 3 minus 4x log 2 is equal to log of 2 plus 6 log of 3. So again, everything here on the right is just a numerical constant. It's just a number. Now, on the left, my goal is to try and isolate my x variable. Well, I have x in both of these places, so the way that I'm going to isolate my x is by factoring it out. And so this gives me x times 5 log of 3 minus 4 log of 2. And the right-hand side stays exactly the same. I cannot do anything with it at this time. Now, again, more investigating here. If I take x times this, if I look at both of these, that is just numerical values. It's just a constant. So if I want to get rid of it and isolate my x, then I divide by that whole unit. 
So I divide by 5 log 3 minus 4 log 2 on both sides of the equation. And so we have actually finished this problem. If we want the exact answer, then x is equivalent to everything that we here have here on the right. x log 2 plus 6 log 3 is over 5 log 3 minus 4 log 2. So if it wants the exact answer, then this is what it is. If it wants the approximate answer, then all we need to do is type this in our calculator. Okay, so in my calculator, I have log of 2 plus 6 log of 3. And notice I have everything in the numerator in parentheses. And then I'm going to divide that by 5 log of 3 minus 4 log of 2. And so my decimal approximation is 2.677777599. And again, this decimal continues forever. Depending on how many decimal places the problem specifies to round it to, you need to, of course, just follow those rules. So I'm going to round this to three decimal places. And so that would give me 2.678. So this is my approximate answer. If I wanted to double check this, I could do this a couple of different ways. I can plug my approximate answer back into the problem to make sure both sides of my equation is equal to each other. Or I've shown you how to double check it via a graphing utility. In the last videos, I've used Desmos. In this video, I'm going to check it utilizing the graphing calculator. So in my first equation, I'm going to type in 3 to the 5x minus 6. And in the second equation, I type in 2 to the 4x plus 1. Now, I'm going to start this on the standard window, Zoom 6, which might or might not work. Just note that you might have to adjust the window to see the point of intersection, which is specifically what we're looking for here. So the blue is the left-hand side of my equation, 3 to the 5x minus 6. And then the red is the right-hand side of the equation, 2 to the 4x plus 1. Now, if we look at this graph here, we see that it might look like it's intersecting infinitely places here on the on the left. So you can see that I have enlarged this. It still looks like it intersects infinitely many times over here. If I were to adjust this in such a way that my y range was really small, so a really small negative y minimum and a really small positive y maximum, you could see that these graphs are in fact not overlapping. They're stacked on top of each other. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the point of intersection. Now, the advantage to solving it before graphing it is we know that where our answer should be. We came up with the solution of x equals 2.67. So that's telling us that our point of intersection should be over here at 1, 2.67, which is right here. So we should see that our point of intersection should be happening over here which means that we need to adjust our window. It should be happening up here somewhere, which means we need to adjust my Y max. So let us do that. Let me go to my window. I'm going to keep everything else the same except for my Y max. And I'm going to make it quite large to make sure that we actually do see that point of intersection. So I'm going to make it 5,000, and that means an appropriate scale might be every 1,000 units. And so let me graph this to see if we can actually visualize the point of intersection. So the blue is the left-hand side of my equation. And the right is the right-hand side of the equation. And so we can see that this is intersecting over here approximately 1, 2.67 units. Now, we can see that they crisscross, but it's really hard to pinpoint where in this graph. 
So let me adjust my window one more time. Now I can adjust it manually, or another way that we can adjust windows if we have a specific thought process in mind is we can use the zoom box feature. So I'm going to use option number one. So I'm going to draw a box around where I think my point of intersection is going to be. So it's going to be a really tall, really skinny box. So it looks like I see up here the blue on the left and the red on the right. So I'm going to start there. And then if I draw my box down and over where I see my red on the left and my blue on the right, I should clearly see my point of intersection. So what's going to happen here is this box is now going to become my window range. So let me hit enter. And then hopefully at this point we can see the intersection very precisely. So again, blue is the left-hand side of my equation. And the right is the right-hand side of the equation. And so now we can see that there is a very precise crisscross action happening here. So we can estimate the point of intersection by just pushing the trace button, and that might give us close. And so if we already know our answer like we did in this situation, this might be enough. We can see it's happening at the right place. If you don't know your precise point, you can use your intersect feature, which is the calculate. So second, calculate. And then number five, intersect. So how this works is it first puts you on the first line, my Y1 or my blue line, and we move this cursor left and right to where we think the intersection is. So this is pretty close to my intersection, so I'm going to hit enter. Then it puts me on my second curve, which is the Y2, which is the red line. Again, I can move my cursor left and right, so I want to go where my point of intersection is, and so I hit enter. And then it wants me to guess where I think the point of intersection is. Most likely you'll already be right there, so you just need to hit enter again. And so it tells me precisely that my point of intersection is 2.67, and then the Y value is 33,052. And so now we have confirmed that we do have the correct point of intersection. So if you want to double check anything by using your graphing calculator, you're going to use it underneath the calculate feature. So second, calculate, and then intersect. And basically you find your point of intersection and you hit enter three times. One for the first curve, one for the second curve, and one for your guess. And then it should confirm that you do have the correct answer where your point of intersection is.